my favorite thing to do was this with female clients who were on that that continual diet, right? Always cutting calories, always trying to reduce, always trying to reduce. And they'd come in and I'd do my assessment, do all the stuff, and then I'd convince them, hey, we're gonna increase your calories with strength training. And it used to blow them away because they would anticipate blowing up. Like, oh my God, I'm gonna do this. I'm gonna gain so much weight, this is gonna suck. And instead what would happen is their weight would fluctuate a little bit, but their strength would go up the like crazy. strength would shoot up. And then they would always say, I, I, I want you guys' opinion on it. I'm sure this happened to you many times where your client didn't, where they'd say this to you, you know, the scale says the same thing, but people are coming up to me and saying, I look like I lost weight. My skin looks different. Yeah. Like, you know, there's just some things too about balancing the hormones. If you've been in a calorie deficit for so long too, it, it really does, you know, affect your body in all kinds of other ways, uh, you know, sleep and, you know, hair and skin and like all these types of things. So yeah. uh, it, it was just always interesting to me to see um, what they what they found uh, as they were going through the bulk, like how much it, it transformed their bodies. What's up, everybody? Here's the giveaway for today. Map Strong, great workout program. We designed it with Robert Oberst. He's a world strongest man competitor. Here's how you can win. Leave a comment below in the first 24 hours that we drop this episode. Subscribe to this channel and turn on notifications. Do all those things, and if we like your comment, we'll pick you, we'll notify you, and you'll get free access to Map Strong. One more thing. It's April, which means it's time for another promotion. We are selling a bundle of programs for a very low price. Here's what it is. Maps Prime, Maps Prime Pro, and Maps Anywhere. All three programs would normally retail you for $361, but right now you can get it for $99.99. That's it. That's the promotion, okay? Prime, Prime Pro, and Anywhere. $99.99. Go check it out. Go to mapsapril.com. All right, here comes the rest of the show. Ladies, don't be afraid to go on a bulk. Most of the times, it's exactly what you need to do to get the body that you want. Even if it is that you want to lose weight, right? Yeah, yeah. No, even if you want to lose weight, because oftentimes uh, going on a slight bulk with strength training speeds up the metabolism and sets you up for better fat loss. But nonetheless, lots of women know the look that they want, but they associate that with smaller or lighter on the scale. It's not always the case. Often what it is is more shape and more muscle, more sculpt. And you only get that through um, feeding yourself and strength training. You got to feed yourself in order to get that. I love repeating this message. I just feel like um, it, it isn't uh, promoted as much as it should be. Like it, it, and it's so silly that um, if you think about building the body up, you need to feed the body. You need the calories. You need the building blocks in order to get that uh, desired physique that a lot of women are going for. It's just it. It's just sucks because so much marketing is around how to lose weight, how to lose fat, and like it's just this this constant kind of hamster wheel that I I find a lot of my clients got on. Yes. I want to think it's getting more popular. Though. I mean, right before we got on air, we were talking about two of our our friends, Becky Campbell and Lori Christy King, and both of them. I they're mean, they're great at Becky yeah. Campbell. Just did the post right of yeah, showing her bulk, her yeah. her bulk and her transformation and stuff like that. It looked phenomenal. And then I feel like LCK has been saying that for quite yep. some time now. So. I I, I, I want to believe that we're, I do still think general population, you know, yeah. I think, I think still don't get this message, but I feel like the fitness community is starting in to, just the last seven years, yeah. by the way. Yeah. Uh, or since even we less, started, right. Since we started, yeah. I've noticed a shift that where women are starting to get this message, which is good because if you feed the body and you strength train, you build the machinery that's required to burn body fat and muscle is here's something else. That's a lot of people don't know. Muscle takes up just a little more than two thirds of the space of body fat, right? So, excuse me, uh, yeah, of body fat. So if everybody watching this right now lost 10 pounds of body fat, but gained 10 pounds of muscle, you would weigh the same on the scale, but you would be significantly smaller. You'd be like one fourth smaller, something like that, right? Which is significant, but same body weight. You know, I used to sell uh, memberships this way. I had a, I've told this story many times on uh, shows that I've been on. I think I've told it before on this show, but I had this female trainer that worked for me. I think you guys know her. She's like 5'2", um, very sculpted, very strong, like to lift weights. And I would challenge potential members. And I'd say, I'll give you a free membership for a month if you could guess within 10 pounds of this female trainer's body weight. And they would all guess 100. The highest I ever got was 110 pounds. Oh, she's 110 pounds. Then I'd have her stand on the scale. She was 130, 135 pounds. Mm -hmm. She was just lean with muscle but she looked very small and it tripped people out that you could look They're that 20 way. 20 pounds off. 20 guess. pounds off. Yeah. You know? First time I heard that story. 
Yeah, no, you've heard that before. <laughs> I've told that story. I wonder if it's Homera or. Uh, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Anyway, I've said that many times yeah, on the show, but I like to illustrate it because it's true. Like you, you look at me, right? I weigh about two hundred and ten pounds at six foot. My body fat sits relatively low, a little bit below ten percent. If I was two hundred and ten pounds at twenty percent body fat, I would look very different. Same weight on the scale, and I think this speaks to the obsession with the scale as well, which really only tells you one piece of information. Total body weight. Doesn't tell you body composition. Doesn't tell you how you look. Doesn't tell you any of that stuff. When I originally started uh, social media, right, uh, all turned on all that stuff, um, this was what I was trying to highlight. So I, I had started and was in the worst shape of my life at 212. And my before and after pictures that a lot of people that listen have seen, um, I'm the exact same weight. Now, I, mind you, I went up and down a little bit, three to five pounds, right? Like, yeah. cause you ended the same. Yeah, I ended the same, but the, my body looks completely totally different. different. Like, totally if different. you were to guess, most people guess it's like a 20 pound difference or more, but it wasn't. It was a, a, it was exactly the same weight. And I think that's why this getting hung up on exactly what the scale is, is, is ridiculous. Cause I could take a client who comes in at any body weight and say, we can dramatically change the way you look and keep your scale weight exactly the same. Yeah. I, I, my favorite thing to do was this with female clients who were on that, that continual diet, right? Always cutting calories, always trying to reduce, always trying to reduce. And they'd come in and I'd do my assessment and do all the stuff. And then I'd convince them, Hey, we're going to increase your calories of strength training and used to blow them away because they would anticipate blowing up like, mm -hmm. Oh my God, I'm going to do this. I'm going to gain so much weight. This is going to suck. And instead, what would happen is their weight would fluctuate a little bit, but their strength would go up the like crazy. Strength would shoot up. And then they would always say, I, I, I want you guys' opinion on it. I'm sure this happened to you many times where your client didn't, where well, they'd say this to you, you know, the scale says the same thing, but people are coming up to me and saying, I look like a lost weight. Yeah. And that happened to you guys all the time? Yeah, with yeah. Oh, yeah. My skin looks different. Yeah. Like, you know, there's just some things, too, about balancing the hormones. If you've been in a calorie deficit for so long, too, it, it really does, you know, affect your body in all kinds of other ways. Uh, you know, sleep and, you know, hair and, and skin and, like, all these types of things. So yeah. uh, it, it was just always interesting to me to see um, what they, what they found, uh, as they were going through the bulk, like how much it, it transformed their body. Speaking of calories, I saw that, uh, Sal had Doug pulling up the macros on yeah. the paleo Valley, uh, beef jerky sticks. I had no idea they were that low. Yeah. So the Turkey stick, so Turkey's real low. Yeah. yeah so the, the, the meats, first off, the reason why this is the reason why we work at paleo Valley, they sent us a, year, a while ago, meat sticks, and all of us were like, whatever, not a big deal. Yeah. We're not even going to try them. And then our good friend Shauna was the one that works with them, and we really respect her. She's like, no, you got to try these. And they're really good, right? They're not dry. They're, they are they taste fresh. They're grass-fed, really good, whatever. And that's why we actually started working with them. Well, now they have one that's turkey. I have never had turkey jerky that tastes good, ever. Yeah. Yeah. It's always gross. I know. I was very skeptical, especially the flavor, too. It was like cranberry, it was like orange. Uh, That's what it says. Yeah. And I'm like, I don't know. And it it literally, I think it's actually one of the better ones out of all of it's them. It's my favorite yeah. one. Yeah. Like, Seven so grams good. of protein and only, what, 60 calories? No, 40. 40 calories? So, so Think about that for a second. So literally, you could take two of these. Or, so yeah. if you want to go on the go and you want 14 grams of protein, protein in the mouth. Or you want 21 grams of protein. I was going to say, go three and you're three. still under 200 calories and being able to get 20-something grams of protein? Of of that's incredible. Of very of essentially whole foods, right? Because yeah. it's still packaged or whatever, but it's essentially whole food. It's all turkey, and it's all uh, very good and very low calorie. And then the beef ones, I believe, are sixty calories. I don't know. Maybe Doug can scroll down. I know the beef ones are a little bit more because they're a little bit higher in uh, body in fat. Yep, that's it right there. So sixty calories mm -hmm. and a little bit lower. Is that in the protein. beef? Or I thought no. Doug's those are turkey. They're both. These turkey. are both turkey. Oh, they're both. Yeah, turkey. one's cranberry orange. That's why Doug was saying that before the podcast, oh. Sal, when he was like, "That's interesting that one of them has got a gram of protein higher because they both were turkey." Oh, my bad. What were the beef ones? Were those more? Or were they're they also like seventy and eighty calories? Okay, so yeah, a little bit yeah. more. Yeah. yeah, a little bit more. Wow, it's still not really bad. I mean, still, it, if you can get 20 grams or more of protein and stay under 200 calories, yeah, right. Good that's luck. just hard. Yeah. And, and it packaged on, on the go. Yeah. You just hard to find that. And then also tasting good too. Cause some of there's some protein bars out there that actually have those, uh, those metrics, but it's like, Oh, yeah. they taste like chocolate. Yeah, I, give, I, I, like I a brick. My kids like them and my kids are 
so hard to satisfy when it comes to like anything that's even remotely healthy. In fact, yeah. I have to lie to them. <laughs> wait, is this gluten free? Same, I know. Yeah, wait, is this low sugar? They get so mad when they find out something's gluten free. Like uh, now, like especially if it's like a muffin or something. Like, oh, you tricked me! Like, like, <laughs> Do they really? Yeah, it's, it's, it's happened a few times, but because yeah, like, no, we've tricked too. them so many times that, uh, yeah, what are you going to do? We, <laughs> we've tricked them so many times. I don't Inevitably, trust my they're going to catch on. I know? wonder why. <laughs> <laughs> There's no spider in your bed, son. <laughs> <Gotcha>. <laughs> yeah. Hey, you returned your uh, your your devil worshiping thing, huh? I did, yeah. Which I didn't even talk oh, about that. that. <laughs> don't call it that. Dude, it was like, it, it, here's the thing. I look at it again. It wasn't that menacing when there's a lot of light on it. And like yeah. so when I had the pictures it was like outside. I should have took one where I had it stood up against the wall and there was only like one light that was hitting it from up top and the rest everywhere else was dark and so it just created these shadows. And it was really the shadows that it made it just like ugh, like the face kind of took form and shape. Anyway, I I didn't even really have that much like I wasn't that Afraid. It was my kids, and that, that they're the ones that like pointed it out to me. So I was like, I don't want to like. Well, kids are more have them. They're more in by. tune with the spirit world. So you got to listen to your kids sometimes. And <laughs> apparently, shit going Acor on. according to the yeah. movie Six Sense. Yeah. Is that right? Any more? <laughs> any more? It's kids and pets, right? Isn't it kids and pets that see shit? Yeah. Um. Any more like weird, strange, paranormal phenomena? Are you good now? No, we're good now. I took it. Uh, we drove it all the way back and we're able to I can't believe you it. did that. Dude. He did a day trip all the way down there just to return that thing. Because you know what was going to happen. Like I was going to have it. I had it in my garage or, and then I was going to put it in the shed. And then it was like you, you spend all this money and then you forget about it. It's going to yeah. collect right. spider webs and dust. I'm like, I got to. I gotta like take some action, and and so we, and it was it was exhausting because the whole day we drove all the way down there, and we're trying to do all like get all this like uh, exchange and different um, uh, furniture, and and then we drove right back, and it's like your whole that's six hours of just did, what did, nonsense. What did, they, what did you say? What did you what did they say to you, and what did you say to them? <laughs> I told Court, I'm like, dude, we're just gonna bring it back and be like, it didn't work for a house. Like it just, it wasn't a good look or, or, you know, whatever. She's just like, yeah, it, the kids thought it looked like demons. So we just didn't want it in the house. And like, they were laughing about it. I'm like, <laughs> like are, I'm surprised they're giving us our money back. Like That's not a good excuse. Like the movie Gremlins when the guy buys the pet, you know, and he's yeah. like, okay, just don't feed it after midnight. Don't get it wet. Oh yeah. No problem. Don't ever feed him after midnight. Yeah. Did you get anything else when you were there? Or did so you just take it back? So we exchange and it for these other chairs, which are supposed to come, I don't know, based on the supply chain uh, five years from now. Bro, <laughs> yeah. have you guys seen the numbers of inflation? Yeah. So I, they say official 8.5%, but have you seen the numbers of breakdowns yeah, and stuff? They say it's o over that. Bro, right? gas this year, over 40%. Yeah. Used cars, over 25%. Furniture, something like over 16%. Plane flights, over 25%. First of all, I don't know where they get their inflation numbers. Yeah. If they take out everything people buy to get 8.5%, I don't know. But it's crazy. Do you know what I find the most annoying about the freaking gas is that your debit card only lets you do like a hundred bucks or whatever on there. So it's like you can't even get a full tank anymore. Yeah. And I'm like, so I had, so I, ended, I just pumped gas yesterday. Fill it, fill, oh, fill it that's to a, That's a security measure, isn't it? Yes. Yeah. And so then I got to re, wow. re hook it back up and then swipe the card again and then do it again just so I can get a full tank of gas. So annoying. Wow. wow. Oh, yeah. speaking, because so when we were driving down, we were actually at a gas station. This guy, we, when we were pulling out, um, I, we saw this guy like, like leaving like really quickly and he literally took the handle with him Whoa. and pulled it off. I've and seen that before. I've never seen that I before. Have. And it was like, I got really nervous. I'm like, Oh my God. Like hope, hopefully nobody's smoking a cigarette or something around here. Like it was spraying. Oh, everywhere. so gas was spraying gas everywhere? was yeah. all over the place. I thought like, they had shut off mechanisms for that. I thought so too. It, obviously it wasn't. No, uh, I've seen it. Same thing. It, the guy left it in his tank and drove off and it ripped the thing right off. The, oh, shit. oh yeah. Yeah. And then I was it like, was oh my God. You ever seen like, <laughs> you ever seen the video <laughs> an explosion here? You ever seen a video of this guy, these two carjackers drive up to him while he's getting gas. They get out of their car and then he gets the gas and he just sprays them with it and they run away. No. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> He's like, <laughs> just hosing them down with gas and they run. 
<laughs> Smart. Dude. I, I mean, saw the video and I'm like, is he gonna let him on fire? What's gonna happen? Yeah. They just ran away. Uh, yeah. It's really cool. You like? Phew. Do you guys know what the chemical? I think it's called polyfluorinated alkyl uh, substances are. PF. Definitely do not. Oh, I definitely washed my face with that. <laughs> okay. Now PFA. PFAS. So uh, polyfluorinated alkyl substances. These are molecules that you'll find or synthetic chemicals you'll find in nonstick pans, oh. uh, nonstick carpet, okay. uh, you know, clothes, water resistant materials. And there's a lot of controversy around these things because they are found in our blood. Like they just don't go away. And oh so there's God. a lot of controversy saying, hey, this may be a cancer risk. This may be a- Is there long-term studies with this at all? They or? think that they might act like xenoestrogens yeah. and they may increase risks of certain types of cancers. That's why there's a lot of controversy around them. So like I don't use nonstick pans. I use uh, ceramic mm. pans if I mean, use anything that's or even- cast iron. Or cast yeah, iron. Cast but if iron I use anything that's like- hand. If I'm doing eggs and I want something that's kind of right. nonstick, it's ceramic, which is, it's not the same, right? But anyway, did you know that they find, they did a study and they finally found a way to reduce blood levels of this chemical? Giving blood. Oh, wow. Giving blood. So donating blood or Again, donating plasma. Medieval measures. I'm, you know, they're onto something. <laughs> they get all the demons out. Blood right? letting. <laughs> so de donating blood or plasma, they found in the study, reduces the amount of PFA PFAs in people's blood. Now I'm assuming that's how you found this because you've been you've been de you've decided that you're going to start doing this on a more regular basis. Actually, no, I, no, it was it was random. But you're right, I have decided. And, and, and I have, oh, that's weird. So you randomly came across that, and that just supports even more reason. Yeah, why because I saw the title of the article it said new evidence shows blood or plasma donations can reduce the PFAs forever chemicals they call them in our bodies. And I thought, oh, this is going to be really interesting. And yeah, I, I, my blood type is the universal one. So that's, they encourage me to come back or whatever, but I guess that's more benefit, right? To giving blood is that you can get rid of some of these chemicals. I wonder now, what, what I wonder what else you potentially can get rid of then too. If, you, if something know. like that goes, which you know what it makes me wonder? Chemicals. Yeah. Does that mean the person getting the blood then gets those PFAs or like what's going on? Is that how it's reducing uh, them? Yeah. You just give, you just fuck You're recycling else. it. You're good. Else. <laughs> <laughs> That's don't they fucked. screen that? Right? They, I don't think they test for that. They don't test for chemicals. Uh, they just test for like uh, disease, yeah. blood-borne pathogens yeah. and whatnot. You're right? going to say something? Yeah. Like? Trust me, if you need blood, you're not so concerned about that. I guess you imagine that. That's a good point. That's a good point. Your wife is dying. You're like, oh, well, hold on a second. Did that blood have uh, that's kind of like GMOs have you guys ever done this before? It's like one of my biggest pet peeves. Like you're giving money or you're buying you're buying somebody. Like I've seen people before, like at like near Burger King or something. I like, go through drive through to get them food, and they like have like a special like request. You know, it's not like I can't just give them a burger. It's like no, 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 I don't want this. I want yeah. that. And they have oh all these, my yeah. god, yeah. Like, bro, you're starving. Take the goddamn burger, yeah, bro. I've had that. Yeah, yeah. I've had I've had a, yeah. a guy on the street like that. I was trying to give him my leftover, and he's just like, "Did you already take a bite?" And I was like, "Yeah." Well, I'm good. Wow. Oh, you're good? Yeah. <laughs> you're just right here on the street, dude. You got nothing. All right. <laughs> I don't have anything. You know, like, like, I'm, not I'm cool. I'll just door dash something else. <laughs> yes. I was offended. I had a guy once that I went up and I offered him food and he asked me for money and I said, sorry, I don't have cash. And he says, well, I have square. And he pulled out. Shut your face. I swear to God. Oh my God. I told somebody to do that. That's crazy. He pulled out his phone. He had square. <laughs> now I'm like, I'm not going to give you. I don't know what else is going to go, but he, he's like, you can use credit card. I'm like, yeah. wow. <laughs> this is resourceful. <laughs> this, is getting, <laughs> this is getting kind of crazy. Yeah. Anyway, more cool science news. So there's this, uh, I got to look this up. There's this disorder in the brain, very hard to treat. Uh, Dandy Walker syndrome. It's a, it's a brain disorder you see in children. And there's a company that came up with a very unique way to potentially treat this by using tiny robots that they put in the brain. What? So th these tiny robots they'll put in the Little brain. Robots? And yeah, and the, and they'll be operated through magnets. And what the ro robots will do is they'll go through the brain to wherever this like these fluid fill cysts are, and then inject the medicine directly where it needs to go. Now this this is real. This is real. Living in in sci-fi. This is real. Now the the potential for something like this is phenomenal. Think about it. You have a tumor in your body. Yeah. You can now have potentially these nano robots travel directly to the tumor, inject the tumor with chemo mm -hmm. directly, so it doesn't affect the rest of your body or whatever, right? You or have treat like a little army in there just yeah, it's shooting things. Wild, like, yeah, it's so wild. That's uh, crazy. Yeah, I've been reading about some of these these nanobot and you know nanotechnology advancements. The next thirty years is gonna be really interesting for medicine. It's well, crazy. It's it's here. 
uh, because I've been reading about a lot like popular science yeah. and all that. Yeah, it's like always like that. That was always so far in the future and to see like that that's actually coming true. Crazy. It's so crazy. speaking of sci-fi, I, I I owe you two an apology because you guys actually reco- you guys recommended a good movie or show. Finally, yeah, it's dude. It, the Raised by Wolves, and I so wait, wait hold on, what, by what Wolves? <laughs> <laughs> Say it again. Raised by Wolves. Yeah. Wolves. So, so I. I I had so I looked at it and I said, "Man, I wa- or I saw that I had watched already three episodes and it obviously didn't hook me in." And I'm like, "Well, let me give it another shot." The, the guys were talking so much about it, um, so I did, and, and you know, I smoked a little weed before I did it. So, and I was so I was sucked into it. And and what I found was that's what I had to do was you had to be no, you can, I couldn't be distracted. So what I think I did before it's actually pretty complex. Isn't is it? yes, yeah. there's a lot of stuff going on. There's there's a pretty deep plot Very behind deep. it and. And it could get really confusing if you're kind of multitask. It's not a multitask and watch show. So once it put now I'm in. It's now not I'm passive, all the way in. definitely not. Yeah, no, it's 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 pretty cool. And what the the idea behind? I'm excited to see where I it goes. I thought you'd like it because uh, there's, uh, I mean, the religious side of it, the yeah. atheist, the it's just it covers a lot of really. Um, they it, it's the, profound ideas. It's well made sci fi because sci fi can be good if there's a good story, if like the story's good, yeah, and if the science in it is somewhat interesting or believable. Um, and they did a good job with that. But they do they they tackle well religion and and you know what they do in there that's gonna be hard. It's gonna be hard for you to figure out because I'm only in the first season yeah, who you're pulling. From. Yes, at one point you're like evil. That person's evil. That thing's evil. and then you're like, wait a minute, right? You know, that's in, in, in the human psychology and like how the robots are becoming more human and yeah. they're struggling with that. They don't want to, but then you know the humans also want you know guidance uh, from AI and it, it's complex. Well, to me, that's what makes a really good show is if it can emotionally pull me from one side to yeah. the other, and and you're not like. To me, like if you watch a show and you've kind of, oh, I figured the plot out. I, yeah. you know, I see where this is going. I agree with all, versus if I'm watching something and one minute I feel very emotionally attached to one side or one yeah. character mm-hmm. and then all of a sudden I get switched to another. To me, that's great writing. If you can make me go through that back and forth mm-hmm. in my head versus like identifying with one way or one thing through the now, whole thing. You know what is cool yeah. is that with, because again, I'm a big sci fi nerd. If you'll notice that they'll borrow off of old sci-fi. Like, for example, yeah. AI robots that look human, so humanoid robots in sci-fi movies, whenever they bleed, what color is the blood? Almost always. White. Yeah. It's almost always white. white. You ever notice that? Yeah. yeah almost always. White. You know what I think that first started? Uh, Alien. Remember the movie Alien, how the the mm. android robot that mm. helped Sigourney Weaver or whatever, and then he gets <clears> cut <throat> in half, and it's like white blood coming up? I feel like that's the first movie to show that well, isn't that because of like hydraulic fluid like you know maybe robots? huh i didn't yeah, even think like, of that i yeah. thought the way that first episode opened was like crazy just yeah. with the the giving birth to six humans i know i thought that was kind of that was trippy it's trippy yeah i, I was know, like there were like six like yeah <laughs> almost yeah, just got thought, litter uh, i mean uh, it, all, it it almost seems like believable like good could we get to a place like that where we could do something like that that yeah. seems pretty fascinating i know it's so wild yeah. uh, so adam i want to ask you about your your new injury so what's going uh, on bro. with your uh, you would think after all these years and all You've this gotten experience a lot of injuries, like the last three wisdom, years, right? <laughs> <laughs> you would think, you know, I, uh, I've just recently in the last few weeks, uh, ramped up uh, my volume and training, starting to tighten the diet up and stuff. You could tell. Your well, body's changing I, for you sure. know, what I found I was doing, I was calling Justin fat a lot and he looks way better than I do. <laughs> and I was like, I'm totally projecting my own shit on him. <laughs> So I I picked Calling up Doug on, Bald. Yeah, yeah. Calling so, him fat. <laughs> so I caught myself doing that, and like more often than than not, I'm like I must be projecting my own insecurities about myself right now. So that was kind of my wake up call to I need to get my shit together. So I could tell you've been working out. You look like your body's been training, but would you just go too hard? Well, so I hadn't done the uh, yoke bar in a while. Mm. and uh you know not that i don't know this i should know better like the amount of uh core strength and stability man way that, more way way it's more it sits so high on your yeah back. And, and i so I, and i've been consistently uh barbell back squatting for quite some time even when my frequency was in volume was down but i hadn't used that in quite some time and so my leg felt really strong so i get under there and it's like oh yeah you know this this was light i keep adding keep adding keep adding um, and what gave was my core. And so I strained my, my mid back. I don't think it's a me. I, I didn't tear or do anything structurally wrong. Like it's 
it's just a strain. And I know it's because I didn't have the core strength and I didn't slowly allow myself to progress there. And because my legs were still pretty strong from being consistent there, I just- Did you stupidly, feel it in the workout or after? No, I felt it in. Like you, oh, I feel something, and then yeah. you kind of chill. Yeah, yeah, and yeah. then I backed off. I still continue to work out. I lifted yesterday, but I had to do a bunch of like you know isolation, light and cable stuff. You saw me probably laying on the ground doing some stuff on the free motion, like. So I, I mean, I'm still staying consistent, but now it's like, you know, it's, it's such a, an example, right? With you trying to make progress, getting excited about mm -hmm. the the you know having some momentum, and now because I do something stupid like this, right? It was ego lifting by stacking more than was necessary. Now I'm gonna probably have to regress. For you the know next what? Week. Though, you gotta rebuild a bit. This is a good. No, this is a good thing to communicate because we are we're constantly communicating um, like fitness advice to our audience, and and when we say something is hard to do. It's because we realize it, we know how hard it is either because of our clients, but also because of ourselves. Yeah. Like, and I want to be very clear here. Often this doesn't happen when you're using a weight that looks crazy to you. Mm -hmm. It's just a little more than yeah, no, that you, wasn't even, did you see the weight on the bar? It was like 200 pounds. It's not like, that's what I mean. So it's yeah. not like you're hitting a PR. It's yeah. just, you haven't done it in a while. Yep. And really what you should do is keep it easy yep. and not make it even moderate intensity. Yep. I, no, I do that all the time. It was not, I mean, I hadn't even done that movement in so yeah. long that it wasn't even necessary for me to load more. I just felt so good. Yep. My yep. legs felt so strong. Yep. And I was like, oh, this is light. Let me see if I just keep increasing yep. a little bit. And it was, yeah. Yeah, so. that's- Well, the, I, yeah, I'm I'm trying my best to, to not like get sucked into the hype as well. Like I told you guys about like how I was like overhead pressing way too much. Uh, you know, just the because kids. of the hype. Did you do kids. another workout with them? I, today, like, I actually refrained from um, uh, displaying uh, my- Your awesomeness. Awesome yeah. prowess. <laughs> he's all, I, I mean, I, he's, he's like, I went heavy for them, but I yeah, could have yeah. gone heavy. Yeah. <laughs> no, it, you know why? Because we had we had this kid who's like, he he, he can't make most of the workouts because he's he, I think he plays um, baseball right now, um, but he's definitely our strongest kid. And he just kind of shows up sometimes like towards the end of some of the workouts to hang out and see what's up. But he cares. He cares about uh, everybody in there knowing like he's the strongest. Mm -hmm. And so he'll flex. And so he came down. He did that when we were testing out for squats. And so, of course, we were testing out for like trap bar deadlifts. And so all of a sudden, you know, he shows up. I'm like, yeah. oh, look who it is. <laughs> and uh, just totally like smashed everybody and, yeah. and you know, put up like 400 pounds. And was like, Is he significantly stronger than the rest of the kids? Uh, <laughs> by about 50 pounds, I would say. Yeah. That's pretty big, yeah. Yeah, that's yeah. Pretty yeah. big difference. So he's, he's a beast. Uh, but yeah, I, would, I mean, it's been really fun because I've been able to see some kids that like had no experience and this one kid who's like really into wrestling and I'm like, Oh, wrestlers have it. They have it here. And so I could tell he was going to be, you know, a kid that was going to catch on. He has, and he's just really rapidly yeah. progressing oh, that's cool. uh, with, with his strength gains. And uh, this is all leading in. We're going to be doing a lift a thon uh, like the end of May. So, so I'm, I'm like, a lift -a -thon. trying to start to ramp him up a little bit. That with sounds getting used to heavy Hold on. Weight. What's the lift a thon? So lift the thon. We we used to do this when I played a long time ago to raise money uh, for the program. And uh, you can either like donate like a flat amount or like we, what we do is like per pound. Oh, so I, I'm gonna I'm gonna host this one instead. We just did bench when I did it, yeah. uh, but I want to include the squat, bench, and deadlift, um, and then do a grand total that um, you know they could pay. You know, 25 cents per right you know, it's like pound. what they do for laps you know yeah. kids that do yeah, the exactly. laps. Like a walk a thon yeah, yeah. we should but all go yeah i would love if you guys go and then we'll, we'll do a barbecue after that oh i totally think we should so, make a big deal about that i think that. we should go and, and lift down. a little bit yeah no, so i'm totally down to do that bro and i've you know and i don't have time to do shit but uh i was like i put a whole website and all that so it's all ready like they're, they're already starting to get donations oh that's and, great dude so yeah it's good we're getting momentum yeah that's so you've, you've now been doing this long enough you had wrote the programming for them what are some of the things that you're learning yourself because this is obviously somewhat new obviously you're not you've written programs for kids and stuff like that but to be implementing it into this type of a setting taking yeah. them through are there things that uh you know looking back now that you are like yeah that was I'm so glad I did that. Or are there things that you're like, I wish I would have implemented more of this. Are there certain things that you had to cut out or like, what are you, yeah. what are you learning about yourself and programming with a this lot? Work? Yeah. Cause group is, is different dynamic, obviously. Um, and just what to cover, what are the, what are the priorities? Like mm. that, that was, took me a lot of time to, to sift through all that and like restructure it. I've, I restructured the workouts a few times. 
Uh, but I was really glad I started them out with isometrics and really slowed everything down. And, um, you know, cause everybody was hyped to start lifting. I'm like, mm. no, we got to address all these imbalances. And we did unilateral training in there a bit, very similar to symmetry, yeah. uh, type of a, um, plan, oh. which was, we were all in that sort of thought process. So that helped me mm. in the beginning, but now we're, now we're, we're sort of graduating into getting them acclimated to, to heavier weight. Cause it's a totally different skill once you really start trying to push yourself. And yeah. I'm like, so I'm learning that balance of like not trying to get them to max too often and or like pull them back a bit, leave two in the tank, yeah. you know, our sort of core principles. Um, they're not quite getting that yet. Like they, you know, they're it's a bunch young. of dudes working. They're out. young and their yeah. ego. And it's yeah. the ego is real high in there. And um so that's something that I'm trying to kind of uh, figure out. And then so I'm 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 doing a lot in, in terms of like um getting a good feel of like where everybody is is um catching on and then what mm. where the deficits are it'll be interesting if you have like a kid or two who like adheres to everything you say like perfectly so you can use him as an example of like i have one that, oh yeah, you one do kid i have like a, see yeah. that's cool i'm like so pumped on him oh yeah. see that's, that's cool. such a great yeah. they, you know, these kids i mean i'm sure they're enjoying it but they have no idea how like valuable this is like as they get older what they're gonna look back on and be like man i learned some great uh, had some great value with my coach. Yeah. Um, the thing about the wrestling kid that seems to be true. I, I remember in high school, the wrestlers were always insane when it came to the work ethic with workouts, like ridiculous. Yeah. They just have an extra motor well, yeah. mental discipline. I think yeah, you have to, the, I think maybe to yeah. make it through wrestling. They're so tough, dude. Well, you know, we've, what, what, even though we, we haven't wrestled, you know what the, the <laughs> weight cut, right? Like cutting you say weight. We haven't wrestled. Like, yeah. like <laughs> you guys want to wrestle? <laughs> nah. <laughs> but we we've all been through a a you know serious weight cut before and when you do that the mental discipline that it takes to be consistent with that because they have to come into a certain way and they and they're also pushing their bodies and training at the Dude, same time I, I just remember like it because i did i did some wrestling with the high school i never wrestled for my high school but i took some of the practices because at the time i did judo and and my buddy invited me and i remember the coach would crank up the heater mm -hmm. crank it up it's like a hundred and it's like a sauna and then they're just going and going and i'm like these guys are crazy just gassing them out constantly I running do this. them and oh man yeah, yeah. It's, I, I, they have brutal workouts yeah. hey so you guys uh want to hear about some interesting tech startup news so yeah. i just looked this yeah. up uh the other day so tech billionaires in silicon valley in particular are starting to invest in one segment of the economy in a big way. You guys want to guess what that is? Hmm. Has to do with energy. Hmm. Has to do with energy. As it, and it's probably opposite of what we think. We would think green, but it's not green. It's some a different direction. Nuclear. Oh, nuclear. Okay. They're there going go. crazy with it. Yeah. So nuclear power, especially if you look at, because nuclear is like a, it's like a pariah, right? It's like the third rail because it's been a lot of negative publicity. Demonized, for demonized right? The reality is nuclear power Right now, if we were to look at all our technology that could potentially oh, stop, you know, way. yeah, fix climate change, fix the environment, give us all the energy we need. We don't need to go pull it out of the ground. We don't need to rely on other countries, all that stuff. It's nuclear. It creates very little waste, very little waste, and it has the potential to power the whole world. And the new tech, they don't have meltdowns. Like they're they're extremely safe. But they're they're scary, right? You if you're a politician, you try and say we're gonna build nuclear. There's a lot of, you know, bad publicity around that and mm -hmm. all that stuff. But anyway. People are starting to, to, to figure it out. Check this out with the tech startups. So on average, tech companies would invest like, I don't know, 100 million, less than maybe 3 million, 4 million a year into nuclear. In 2021, $3.4 billion. Wow. And tech startups dealing and focusing on uh, nuclear, nuclear energy. Wow. Which is really cool. I mean, do you think we're going to go that way soon? We will. Yeah. We will because we have to. Mm -hmm. With the pressure that we're starting to feel with the prices, with you know the there's fact so that- so much conflict, yeah, around oil. Yeah. And, and and there's a lot of regulation around it, which is part of the reason why it's so hard to get- Yeah. Isn't nuclear China plant. kicking our ass in that department? They're like, going to be blow, They're going to be building- They're already building a tremendous- Right. Amount, and and they, I think about. they can do it for like a, a fraction of the price that Less, we can do it for right now because, because of, all, of all the regulations. Yes. But there are these new startups that are looking at building these small- all nuclear power plants that are going to be much easier, much cheaper, and can produce tremendous amounts of energy. And some of these nuclear, this new uh, uh, tech from for nuclear power, they can use waste from old nuclear power plants to power them. So they can literally take waste, mm. use it as their new fuel to create energy. 
Wow. It's really remarkable. Wow. And I'm, I'm glad we're seeing all this hmm. investment because this could be, this is a total game changer when it comes to energy independence. Well, speaking of tech billionaires, you guys see the article that's uh, going around right now on, on Zuckerberg's uh, security team? What? No, no I haven't. I just, I just saw some article about him, like talking about like removing himself from the, the uh, election stuff and politics. Yeah. You so know, going forward. And I'm sure because of that, he ramps up his security because of all that. So any guesses on like what, what his security cost him like a day or a oh year? My God. Oh, wow. I never thought now, about is that. that. Okay. So you know the number what per month? I do. I do. I know both. I know per month and then the. So and the, per day is what you're. Well, I have, I have the, I have the annual and then you could take oh, it. Annual? To, yeah, I yeah. would say. And I could break annual, down. Per day too. I mean, you figure he's got probably twenty four seven security, mm -hmm. so it's got to be it's got to be a million dollars yeah. at least if he's I'll got a big a property. Million. Yeah, like War Warren Buffett spends two hundred sixty thousand dollars a year on that. So to give you first some perspective, that's it. Yeah, yeah but Warren Buffett's not targeted like Facebook. right, right. So yeah, that's, a, that's why I just give you guys kind of a marker yeah. okay. of like somebody at that level. Of, I'll say two million. I say a million. Yeah, twenty six point eight million dollars. Woo! That's a lot. What is he? Seventy six thousand dollars a day. Like. <laughs> Like really? A day? Yeah, wow. that's like MC Hammer like type coverage right there, dude. What does he, <laughs> with his entourage. What does he have like the Avengers? <laughs> like, that's exactly, isn't that crazy? You got the Incredible Hulk. Everybody's got earpieces. I saw that number. And I'm like, what the fuck? Hey, you know what though? Let's talk about how cool that would be. Imagine if you had seventy six thousand dollars worth of security with you every day. You would talk shit to everybody. There wouldn't be anybody who would talk shit <laughs> just, to you. Know what just I mean? roll in. You really have to have like the and, Avengers, yeah. bro. What do you get for that? What do you get for twenty six point eight million dollars? What do they have, like bionic arms and laser I beams? I, so I wonder yeah. what the Secret Service costs uh, annually. Oh, I don't, it's, oh, it's ridiculous. Is it that oh, much? Oh yeah, it's crazy. I, what the I don't know if it's that much, but I know it's ridiculous. Yeah, yeah. twenty six point eight million per yeah, year. You're gonna get a bunch of like mercenary, security. you know, like. But seriously, think about how like imagine like think about how vulnerable. Like you send your kids to do, hey, uh, son, go watch. Walk over there and get me a thing. Don't worry, you're fine. You know, he's five years old, but he's got like two security guards with him that are, you know, seven foot tall. And yeah, what I didn't see on that article yeah. is if it did say that's like extended family or it's just, but I think it's just, I would him. imagine it's, it's personal security plus property security, right? Because he's got huge property. Wouldn't you have like does permanent? It, does that include it? In the no, I think it was just personal security. What are you looking up right now, Doug? Oh, you're looking at just a video of his entourage. Oh, oh, really? Oh, I mean, how many people do you need? All you need is John Wick. And I haven't really had an answer. But now, yeah, I'm thinking I'm back. You don't need anything else. So. Oh, yeah. So they all got suits on, so you don't really, aren't supposed to know. Wow. That's in They're 2017, 7.3. Wow. That's crazy. Can I tell you, I, how, you if that was one of you guys, you know how much I'd fuck with you? I would, <laughs> I would I would run up out of nowhere just to give you a hug, see what happened. Yeah. Hey, you know, get, tackled. get tackled by like yeah. twenty guys. All those guys. I, I you know I I wonder what uh you know you got to think that he must be getting like some serious threats to increase yeah. it at that rate, yeah. right? To get that much. Well, yeah. I mean, it, the, the technology he possesses and the information he has on like so many individuals. I, I bet you. Countries from around the world would love to capture him. Oh wow, you know, that's true. To, to just kidnap him and then oh, that's I didn't think about that, Justin. That's actually all his Facebook, yeah, or, login yeah. information. Plus he looks. Him. Plus, if you look at Zuckerberg, he looks very like he's very easy to kidnap. You know what I mean? <laughs> Doesn't he look like he would have very kid, kid, Have you ever seen him drink a glass of water? Yeah. I mean, come on, dude. Looks like he's never done it before. <laughs> no, but I mean, when you it's see it, that's wet. a good point, though. I, I actually wouldn't even have thought that way, Justin. That's a that's he'd be a target by for international. Yeah, no, um, that's a, that's an that's an interesting espionage point. or whatever, right? Well, it's so powerful. Facebook is just insane. Well, man. look, here's the deal. Like they they made. I've said this before. They made a big mistake as soon as they started acting like an editor. You're going to get attacked by one political party, then the other political party, then the public's going to hate you, and then mm -hmm. you're just you're just a target. Yeah. When you have that much, so that's I, he should have done like he should have just hands off. Oh, I don't know. We don't do anything about it. Not my, should my just problem. kept it like MySpace, dude. I mean, what were you thinking? <laughs> oh man, did, <laughs> did you guys? Everybody have, misses Tom now. You got a MySpace, right? Yeah. Yeah, uh, yeah because like, I had a band. Like yeah, you that put music. Was, it was cool. Yeah, back then it was like you showcased your band. You figured it was almost like having a flyer. You know, like you'd try and like get people to come to your show and, and I don't know what else you were on there for, but to do a creep, I guess, <laughs> like message people. Like, does, hey. it, 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 does it still exist? Doesn't it still exist? I don't know. Can't I, you look it up? I, I know that they, it does, I know they sold. I think for, Doug still is on MySpace. They pulled my old band stuff off chicks. of there though. I was so mad. <laughs> Doug's original MySpace is a, is a, is a tablet. It's a, it's a, it's a stone tablet. <laughs> <laughs> 
They found it in the Egyptian. <laughs> did you ever? Hey, did you ever have a MySpace? Doug? Never did. You didn't have a MySpace? Never. Why no. would you have a MySpace? Pic. I didn't have a MySpace either. You did? No. Why would I have a MySpace? Well, you weren't very cool you guys either, are so lame, I could dude. get that. Justin and I were hella yeah. cool, so we had MySpace. Oh, yeah. So cool. Yeah. I can't, you know what? I, w- <laughs> I wish I could find all a MySpace, day, dude, <laughs> just to see how cool you were. <laughs> you wish. Bro, you I'm pretty sure Hinder hinder was my back. No, I'm pretty sure. No, was it? I'm pretty sure. That's hilarious. Remember, they sold for like ton, like I don't remember how many billions of dollars, and they went nowhere. What a shitty buy. Did they? Did they sell? Yeah. Oh, dude. I didn't know that. I well, thought they know, just. I thought they just got crushed. No, you they know who so- scored the most? I think it was like Dane Cook. Remember how he got so popular and like started doing arenas and everything? It's because like he was one of the first to really adopt like the social media really? idea. Yeah, he, he was all over MySpace and like blew up. Maybe Doug can find out how much. There's always life. like examples of that. People that adopt like these things, they end up taking off and they come up with. I mean, look at the supplement companies. You have like, we remember we used to give shreds shit like crazy. Yeah. The first form guy did it. Andy Versella did a good job with it. Like if you if you get in early and you're one of the first to like and you have figure a the hack out. That on, sticks. Yes. Yeah. No. I, you know what though? It's weird though. I was actually having this conversation with my cousins because I was telling them about our TikTok video. So. We finally have a TikTok. Yeah, we're all, all of us together. Just yeah. do, 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 do. No, we don't do that. <laughs> hey, can I say something else? I told our producer, one of our other producers, I said, if we ever come to you and say, we want to dance for TikTok videos, <laughs> then you should go find another job because you know that <laughs> yeah, just, some shit you know, went down. My, my pump is doing yeah, this. Oh, fuck, they're out of money. No, um, no, it's it's clips of our podcast and stuff, but we finally put we put one up that went viral. I think it's at like 1.2 million yeah, views yeah, in yeah. a couple days. Yeah. But I was That's talking hilarious. to my, my cousins about this and you know they were like oh wow like does that mean you make a ton of money like what's going on i said no it actually doesn't mean anything yet yeah. Yeah. a lot of people think that it immediately means you have this huge you know no. conversion or whatever no. but it doesn't necessarily yeah mean Ka- that. katrina really oversees the the team that we hired to do all that stuff and he was just the other day talking to her and and was really trying to encourage her to encourage us to go start all of our individual and she goes um i'm definitely not going to go tell him to do no, that <laughs> <That's>, <laughs> <laughs> that's yeah, not I gotta go, go relearn the macarena. Yeah, that's not gonna go over very well. If you see guys. me dance on TikTok, can you get negative views? That's what I'll get. <laughs> you know what I, mean? <laughs> I actually would uh, subscribe. I want. I mean, at this play, I I was saying like my justification for us doing is is a little bit of a playing defense because we've now got to a place now where mm. we have so much free content out there that there was people that were taking clips of Using our stuff anyway, huh? and growing their self, yeah. their own personal page. Yeah, so a couple pages like that. to Hilarious. me, to me, it's like as if we can become the uh you know the official mind pump page and at least have our consistent content going up there and be the biggest that are rep- at least representing ourselves it's a little bit of just so we can protect our own real estate yeah what's the, what are the demographics yeah. you know this adam better than anybody what are the demographics of i, I know it's younger right? oh yeah it's like 12 12 i mean andrew might even know that better than me 12 i'd say 12 to like 20 something is the range for tiktok doug could probably look that is up is that if, what it is yeah okay. it's really young i mean really, so really tiktok it goes tiktok is the youngest yeah then second would be what instagram snapchat oh snapchat yeah tiktok oh, that still exists tiktok yeah tiktok snapchat then yeah, i believe instagram then facebook me. and then facebook snapchat the i'm like no yeah dude, you're not i actually think chat. facebook's really uh how is is been bleeding for a while now i think they're actually having a really hard time they're trying to get i know inventive and do different things like to, to try and drive traffic back to them but well, speaking of new services you guys see cnn plus came up with a streaming service and it tanked so bad, they're doing like layoffs or whatever. What? Didn't they have like 10,000 yeah. subscribers or something? Yeah, it tanked. Yeah. So they have to, they had to like do a bunch of layoffs. Oh, there you go, Doug. What do you got? What's there? What happens when you lose oh, trust? It's a, oh, yeah. Eight, it's between 18 and 24. Oh, wow. Yeah, yeah. 18 and 24, 57% are female, 43% male, almost even split, but that's interesting. Yeah. What about um, uh, Pinterest? That one's mostly female, right? Yes. That's a much higher a female audience. Okay. I, and I think that's actually got a higher age because, you, I mean, at least I, I know Katrina uses Pinterest like crazy. Yeah. And, and now, yeah. again, correct me if I'm wrong again, and I'm not just saying this to- I blow- embarrassingly use Pinterest. Do you really? Then. Yeah. Why? That's Would- how I come up with like- Furniture and like, oh, I've used arrange it. rooms. No, that, I, I, Pinterest is like it is solid, bro. You yeah, get a lot I, of cool stuff. I haven't been on like there for forever. design. It helps. Yeah, I haven't been on there forever. That's why I think it attracts a, an older older demographic for sure. Really? What were you gonna say? I was gonna say, and I'm, this is not to blow smoke, but from what I've read, and again, correct me if I'm wrong, Adam. This is I know this is your wheelhouse. That that the podcast audience is the wealthiest, highest IQ, yeah, most more like, affluent. More affluent. Isn't that yep. true? Is that yep. true? Yeah, yeah. No, okay. uh, older, smarter. 
yeah. more successful. So everybody listening to this, you know. I'm not <laughs> yeah, yeah. just saying that because <laughs> we're we're on a podcast. I mean, I think it has a lot to do with our uh, just the your attention span. And and a lot of podcasts originally started as like you know uh, either political authors, so it's it's going to attract somebody mm-hmm. who reads or somebody who's into learning, like. That's typically why you why you originally listen. Now it's changing and it's attracting a younger mm-hmm. audience and there's more entertainment happening. But the original like podcasts that were out there were way more like informative. You know, yeah. they were news authors. Well, it's like long say, form. Like, it's not little clips. So that would that, I would well, assume that that's going to be a little bit of. Do an you consider that with your kids, Sal? I know, like Adam, you're you know, it's going to be a, a little ways for you, but um, like because my kids are like drawn to the short. Clips. Yes, and the short this and I, I keep telling them this is junk food. Yeah, like it, you, we need long form content. You need to be able to like uh, learn something uh, from what you're doing, or, or have takeaways, or even if it's entertaining, like it needs to. <laughs> they need to try a little bit, not just make loud noises and flash. So, lights. so I get I'm torn, right? Because my my kids definitely consume a lot of YouTube, and sometimes I'm like, oh, it's garbage, but then every once in a while, a conversation will pop up. And my daughter or my son will know some really interesting information yeah. about, you know, That's true. Fibonacci sequence, blah, blah, blah. I'm like, how did you learn that? Oh, I watched a, a you know, YouTube. TikTok or, or something. Yeah, oh. no, YouTube. Oh. Yeah, no, neither one of them are on TikTok. But they just, they they also will learn yeah, a tremendous shorts. amount. Yeah, from YouTube. So, so yeah, because my, because uh, Ethan Hill, he is so into World War II. And I'm like, it, which is great. Like, I love that he's into history yeah. and all this stuff. But he's always like bringing up like, so what do you th- what what do you think Hitler what was his motivation you know like bring up Hitler a bunch of times while we're like eating dinner out in public I'm like <laughs> okay let's like um, change the subject I mean this kind of makes people uncomfortable around us like, like I get you're passionate about it but yeah. like you know he wa- he, w- he wants to know he's you- like why was <clears throat> You know, why did he think, uh, you know, all these like terrible ideas and like yeah. he's trying to get you, me to explain You it. know why they, they say World War, because World War II is one of the most uh, popular wars to learn about. Uh, and it's because it's one of the wars where there was a clear bad guy. Yes. Like a lot of wars, you could make the case that, oh, who was the bad guy? He's the ultimate it? villain. It's like, that is one war was like, we had a bad guy. Yeah. You know what I mean? Oh, like yeah. a movie, True. right? Yeah. World War One is interesting. Have them have them watch uh, uh, while 19. we were young or something like that. There's this oh. documentary with um, Peter Jackson mm-hmm. who uh, produced it. Yes, and it is phenomenal. It's all footage from World War One, but they colorize it, and then they have they filmed it when some of these soldiers were still alive, so like in their 90s, and they're talking through what it was like. It's insane. Oh, it's insane yeah. what these kids did. They were all kids too, 17, 18 years old. Dude. You know, back to the short clip talk that we we're just I, what I find really interesting is how we adapt to that. Oh, like, yeah. do you guys remember? So my first experience seeing like something really fast and short, choppy clips like that was actually someone introduced me to Logan Paul like years ago, like when he first like started. And I remember it like, motion sickness? Oh, oh yes. And he does jump cuts. Yes, right? the quick like, jump cuts and fat, 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 fat. And oh, I remember it was so annoying. Yeah. But we we've now I've now been fed that so much yes. that I'm totally used to consuming content. So I wonder if we are just a bunch of old fuddy duddies right now and we're like, oh, long, slower form. Like okay, that's you want to know how also wisdom. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> but, yeah. Yo, no, you want to know how? Watch uh children's programming from the 70s and 80s, and you'll realize just how much it's changed. Mm-hmm. Oh, yeah. If you've ever watched uh Mr. Rogers, yeah, we, he yeah. talks about that in the documentary where he would intentionally pause for like a whole minute yes. and talk slow. Like yes. that was intentional. Thoroughly explain in, in world matters that uh, a lot of uh, teachers were afraid to bring up. And know? also give kids time to pause yeah. and to be with themselves. And you know, some people think it contributes to ADD type uh, behaviors because you don't you develop you don't develop the skill of focus or calmness because you're constantly being stimulated. Now the positive side to it, right? Just playing devil's advocate is that the amount of con- the amount of content that you can consume. I remember the first time that uh, we met Tom Bilyeu and mm-hmm. he mentioned mm-hmm. the hack of listening to an audio book at three speed. Mm-hmm. And I thought that was ridiculous. I was like, oh my God, that's going to be so annoying or whatever. Yeah. And I remember training myself to get to that place. And I actually found that when I got to a, a place where I could actually listen at three speed, I was 
I was taking in more. You have mm-hmm. to focus more. Don't yes. You? you have to pay attention. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. So there, there are some positive sides to it too. So I, I wonder if that's just the, the direction we're going where we're going to consume. And then the next thing is probably multiple things at once. You know, you would think if we keep training ourselves to be able to do that, we'll be eventually adapt to take in information that way. Now it may also, what you're both probably thinking, make us a little dumber too, because yeah, I we'll, I don't know. I don't know if we can do that, but that is an interesting thought. Are you, have you guys identified if you're audio or visual learners? Do you guys learn more from listening or from seeing? Yeah, I'm pretty much on the visual side. Same. Yeah. Same. If I watch a video, I'll absorb it more yeah. than if I just listen. What I are the what are out. all the different types and is there so I, I do better after I, I talk about it too. or or teach it or say it. I don't know what that would be, but I know the traditional breakdown was audio, visual, or kinesthetic. Kinesthetic mean you have to touch it and yeah, actually move with it. Move. I thought they already figured out that everybody is like, everybody benefits from the- It's a mix, it's a mix the, of yes. more. Yeah, I think it was just one's a little higher than the other. Because yeah. so. that's what the Montessori is all based around the kinesthetic, that having yeah. people, having the kids I actually touch and do, kid. do yeah. that. I thought they. I thought that's kind of the prevailing theory on like the best way for most. I think it's all of them. I think what yeah. it is is you want to engage in everything- but you know, I don't know. I, I've identified for myself that I do better if I see if the, if I see the person talking, I'll learn more than if I just hear them talking personally. What I find is I have to go talk about it right away, or it's it's in and out for me. That, so I could read or watch what either one, but if I don't go use it, say it, or tell somebody else, like yeah. tell somebody else or write it down myself, it. I mean, literally, I lose most all of it. It's, mm. it well, does not it's, sit. it's interesting because podcasts were never an option. Uh, right. listening to conversations, but I always did way better when I would listen to um, my, when my dad would have a discussion with one of his friends or whatever. And I was just a fly on the wall. I would mm. always sit there and just listen. And I would get so much out of that. So it's like, for me, I listen to so many podcasts now uh, and get more out of that than even like just listening to books or reading books. Yeah. Do, so. you, do you guys, did you guys ever listen to music while you're studying or working? Do you guys do that? Yeah. You do that. Yeah. I know you do. I can only do the, music. I can only do the brain FM. I can't have anything with words. If it's got words, it in catches it, you. Get oh up. yeah, it'll it'll throw me off. But the Brain FM, and I remember seeing Justin do that because mm-hmm. up until that point, I thought I couldn't well listen to me. anything. But then when I tried listening to the Brain FM, I actually did feel like it got me deeper into uh, my reading. I'm a quiet. Has to be totally quiet. That's typically how I yeah. prefer it too. And I thought that was the only way I could now, do it until now, I saw Justin doing now, Brain yeah, FM. Now, yeah, back to what you're saying about Brain FM. If I'm writing, if I put focus on, yeah. I am like, it, it takes 10 minutes. After mm-hmm. 10 minutes, it kicks in. And then I'm like really on fire. But otherwise, it's quiet. It like put horse blinders on for me because uh, my mind will just jump all over the place mm-hmm. otherwise. Yeah, so I think I'm the only one officially with ADD, though, right? You guys never had official. Uh, uh, yeah, I didn't get yeah. diagnosed. Yeah, I mean, I've never been diagnosed, but it sounds like you got a lot. They of just stuff. said like <laughs> try harder, <laughs> you know, sure. like, get better I'm grades. Sure, I got it. Too. You got all kinds of letters. We don't even know what's going on. <laughs> anyway, hey, so so uh, we're supposed to talk about Viore today. So I wore this is my favorite new shirt that they have because it's got this kind of. Oh, I didn't even know that was Viore. I like the collared. Yeah, yes, this is the. I think it's called a Strato. We have it written down. It's a Strato Tech Polo shirt. But look how like legit it looks. Super like professional looking. Where's right? the V at? Is the V even on there? No, there's no V on it. Oh, so it's wow. just the polo. But I mean, it's the it's the you know the famous the material. Yeah. Looks, so you could. I mean, looks, I could work out in this, but looks, I don't. Obviously, looks comfortable. Looks really good, right? Yeah. I'm going through. I, I spent a ton of money on Viore over the last month. I think I, we all did just recently. <laughs> yeah. I'm going through and getting order. their like professional looking clothes. Yeah. You know what I mean? It's like the ones that you could wear to go out or whatever, not just work out in. And they've got a great lineup. Well, well I think it's good I, yeah. good timing because I think I think we're going to make a big push with you speaking even more and more. I think this next coming year, yeah, just with that. I think with your book and stuff, I think that you're going to be doing more and more like keynote type some speaking. TED so. talks. Well, yeah, we'll see. Yeah, be It'd nice be to see you looking sharp versus like a lot of fitness people up there in their sweats and stuff yeah. like that, which I'm just guilty for doing that too. <laughs> so yeah, same. Hey, real quick, you got to go check out one of our longest lasting sponsors. We've been with this company forever. We love them, Organifi. They have products for daily wellness, active lifestyles, immunity, brain health, beauty, and energy, all of them plant-based. I like their protein powder. It's plant-based protein powder, easy to to digest, uh, great amino acid profile, great for recovery when you're training hard. You got to go check this company out. They're one of our favorites, like I said. Go to mindpumppartners.com, click on Organifi, use the code MINDPUMP for 20% off. All right, here comes the rest of the show. Our first caller is Sam from Georgia. Hi, Sam. How can we help you? Hi, how are you guys doing? Good. Awesome. Um, 
So I'll, I'll just start by reading off my, um, my email that I sent. Um, I started flight attendant training, or I started being a flight attendant about six months ago. I was weight training consistently up until flight attendant training started. Then I pretty much stopped entirely just because um, I didn't have much time. The um, days were about 12 hours long of class and then um, studying. And we were living in a hotel for those six weeks with um, one day off. So I would walk during my lunch break, but that's about it. Um, I lost about 10 pounds during that, which left me at about 124. And then um, after I graduated, I picked weight training back up. Flash forward to now, I am going into um, my seventh week, or I'm finishing now my seventh week of MAPS Aesthetic. My calories are up from 15 to 1,600 um, in training to about 2,400 now. Wow. I weigh 129. Um, I was getting up to like 133, like anywhere in between that, but it's been consistently 129 uh, the past week or so. Um, I do have some shoulder pain. Uh, I've, I've been addressing it from the priming videos that I've um, watched from you guys. And I had some knee and hip pain as well. But um, through those videos, I think that those have been brought back to health. Um, I haven't really had any issues since I um, started doing priming with those. So God bless you guys for that. Thank you. Um, I have so many questions, but I just think I need some guidance on whether I'm doing the right thing, if I need to eat more, if I need to eat less, um, working out too little, too much. It's a really crazy um, schedule that we have. And um, sleep is, is always different depending on the trip. Um, going up and down the altitude affects your body a lot. Sometimes it's really hard for me to get the 24, 25 calories or 2,500 um, calories in just because of how much we're doing and just convenience. Um, but I just wanted to um, see if I could get some insight on that. Um, the flood tenant community is so large, especially in Atlanta where I'm based. And I do spread um, positivity and health um, throughout the community as best I can. Um, I share mind pump a lot, um, probably to more people than who care to hear about it, but um, <laughs> it's helped me so much. So I appreciate that. Um, and it's an insane amount of emotional, mental, and physical stress on the, on the body in this job. So I know your feedback would be really helpful for everybody in this community who is trying to um, have this lifestyle and have it a healthy one at that. Yeah, cool. Uh, for, first of all, I had no idea that that kind of training was that intensive. So that's, that's, pretty, uh, that's pretty insane. But I would, I would, MAPS, this is what MAPS Anywhere is for. Maps anywhere, right. maps anywhere would, be, would be perfect. While you're traveling, it doesn't require any equipment except for maybe resistance bands or like a broomstick, you could do it anywhere. Um, and I think it would be absolutely perfect. Then when you have time to follow a traditional routine, you can switch back to a traditional maps routine. And then again, when you're traveling uh, or when you're working a lot, I would do maps anywhere. It's it's literally exactly what we designed it for was a person who traveled quite a bit. And I've had lots of clients in similar situations and it works really well. Sam, you're, you're in a really good place right now. I mean, the fact that you've got your calories up to that place, you've addressed a lot of the pain issues. And I think some, I think people sometimes then they follow our programs. They assume like you have to follow it from beginning to end exactly how it's laid out, but you're a perfect example of how we would interrupt that with something like Sal said, maps anywhere, or maybe a suspension trainer. Uh, and there's nothing wrong with having it for a couple of weeks and then returning back to wherever you were in maps aesthetic or one of the other programs. And you, I mean, you could even get away sometimes with a week of just doing mobility stuff. There's not, if depending on how stressful work is and, and how taxing that is on your sleep and, and how you feel um, nothing wrong with you having just a week of mobility stuff that you're doing in your, uh, in your hotel room or your house. Yeah. So Sam, consider this, right? if we look at the benefits that you get from exercise, there's the obvious ones, right? Strength, muscle, metabolism, you know, performance, all that stuff, right? But then there's these other benefits of exercise that you get just from doing the movement, right? You feel better mentally, psychologically, just from getting up and being active, okay? Now, studies have been done on this and they show that if you were to take a week off every month, you would actually be okay. You actually would not progress any slower. They actually did this big study where they compared two groups and the people who took a week off after every three weeks of training didn't build any less muscle or any less, less strength. Now, that doesn't mean that they got the same psychological benefits. So here's where I'm going with that. If you were to take a week off every month, you could just move. You could just walk. You could just do mobility, like Adam said. You don't have to follow a structured strength training program. 
so long as most of the time you do. So if you did three weeks of strength training, one week where you're travel and you're, you're not able to work out, so you're doing other stuff, you're just staying active, you're going to gain all the benefits of exercise. You're not really going to miss much. So you're going to be totally okay. I don't want you to, to overthink this. And then if you need some structure, Maps Anywhere is perfect. Do you have Maps Anywhere, by the way? Um, no. All right. I well, just purchased Maps um, Anabolic to do after this. Perfect. Because I do try to be mindful that like at a certain point, if I'm not getting enough sleep or if it's too stressful, it's not going to yeah. be beneficial for me to go hard at the gym. I know that's, I try to be mindful of that. Good. Um, yeah. But a lot of times if I have time on a layover, I'll go find a gym and go um, like outside of the hotel since those aren't very um, helpful. Those yeah. gyms. Well, are, I'm going to send you, I'm going to send you maps anywhere. What airline do you work for, by the way, where are you training with? Uh, Delta. Delta. Okay. All right, not bad. Yeah. Yeah. So the, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> The biggest, uh, um, you know, difficulty obviously is like, you just don't know what, what kind of weight room or what kind of, uh, situation you're going to have every time you land somewhere. Right. So that's why maps anywhere. It's perfect for that. And, you know, when you do have, um, some sort of, uh, consistency here, uh, where you can run one of the programs go for, it, but don't put so much pressure on having to stick with that one program. I think that's where maps anywhere. It's, it's sort of just keeps you going, keeps that signal alive, keeps yeah. your muscles responding. So you just got to constantly think about like how to, you know, express your muscles and keep them active. Uh, and that's, that's the perfect one for when your, um, environment isn't really beneficial in terms of weightlifting. I do like, right. you, I do like you going to maps anabolic next though. I think it really is yeah, a, a great, the right volume. yeah, I think cause aesthetics a bit, a, a bit, more volume in it and i think you'll be fine in anabolic i do anabolic and then i would just use the stuff that you're already doing with uh prime pro and you know build that into your routine some days you take off uh on anabolic and maybe you just focus on mobility days based off of uh your workload Damn. but you're, you're in a great place you're doing really good right now yeah. how long have you been listening to our show um probably a little over a year awesome very cool yeah so i'll do the priming stuff um and I, I, when I have like, it's usually like three days, um, I'll be gone. So I try to do the mobility when I'm, when I'm gone, if I can't find a gym, but I, I have like before during when COVID started is when I kind of started getting back into health and fitness and I was running three, four miles a day. Um, cause lockdown and I decided I wasn't going to get into the slippery slope of, um, bad habits, bad um, eating and drinking habits. Yeah, and then you, uh once things opened up, I started doing weight training, didn't have much knowledge. Um, and so I, maybe it was two years though, that I started listening, but, um, yeah. I started doing weight training, but just gained a bunch of weights. So it was kind of a dirty bulk, um, if you will. And then I kind of got back on track. So it's been a couple of years that I've been on top of it. I just really want to increase my strength and, um, build some more muscle mass, uh, to kind of build the body that I, I want. And, and obviously for health reasons. Yeah, you have the right the right mindset for sure. I do have one request though. So when you're pointing to the emergency exits, then have them point to their phone and and find my phone. <laughs> that would be great for us. Yeah, it'd be great marketing. Yeah, and you'll get your free maps anywhere. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> well, thank you guys. I appreciate it. No problem. Awesome. Thank you. Thank, thank you, you very much. You know, one of the beauties of uh, and I, I communicate this a lot when I get on other shows uh, for you know the, the resistance training revolution. One of the the, the amazing things about strength training. It's one of the few exercise uh, forms or types where the results last a long time and you don't, there's nothing permanent, right? So if you work out to get in shape, you got to keep working out to stay in shape. But with strength training, far less is required to keep what you've built. And if you lose it, you gain it back twice as fast than you did the first time. So it's, it's the most, I guess, permanent form of results you could ever get with the least amount of work to maintain versus other forms of exercise. So, you know, when you're missing a week, even if you miss a week every month, it's, right. it's, it's one fourth of the, of the month is off. Mm -hmm. I mean, studies clearly show that you're going to be totally okay. Of course, there's benefits to just being active, but my point is you don't have to have structured strength training all the time, even if you miss one fourth of the time uh, of the month. Yeah. I, that's, that's the power and benefit of strength training versus cardio too. Totally. I think as long as you adjust uh, calories during that time, you should be pretty good because that's probably the only mistake that people make when they take off like a week like that is- That's why I said just move, you know? Yeah. yeah. So go go for a walk, do mobility, stuff like that, replace what was the workout and you're going to be just fine. I mean, that when you shared that study, I remember when it was when we first shared it on the show, but that blew my mind. I mean, one seventh. I mean, that's 
crazy when you think about that. Well, that, I mean, it makes sense now. Yeah. All of us are in our forties, right? Uh, much easier. I don't. I mean, to maintain my body is like a piece of cake. If I want to go any further, I got to really push myself. But to keep what I've built, which took us so long to to get, yeah. it's so easy now. So it's it's really really cool. And again, it's one of these forms of exercise where the older you get, the easier it becomes to maintain, which is pretty interesting, right? Our next caller is Heather from Texas. Heather, what's happening? How can we help you? Hey guys. Um, thank you so much for everything you do. Thank you for taking my question. I'm really excited to be here. Yeah, cool. Um, my question's about um, MAPS performance um, and modifying it a little bit to fit my goals and my lifestyle. Um, I consider myself an endurance athlete. I run marathons. Um, I've been doing that for about 10 years. Um, the gold standard for me, my goal, um, and for marathon runners has always been a Boston qualifier. And I had never quite achieved that level of speed. Um, until 2017, I had a big breakthrough and I discovered weight training. Um, I added strength training to my plan. I was doing uh, push-pull legs and um, had success. I was able to improve my PR with that addition. Um, in 2018, I ran my Boston qualifier and I had a series of really successful races. Um, then in um, 2019, end of 2018, 2019, had some personal setbacks, um, totally unrelated to fitness. And then, of course, COVID. <laughs> mm. um, shut, up, shut down all the gyms. Um, everything came to a halt. Um, I'm a flight attendant, so it's been particularly stressful for us. Um, I've been continuing to fly through the pandemic. I've had COVID twice. And uh, during this time, it's been really difficult to kind of balance um, all the things going on, running, weight training, and everything. Um, but since I discovered you guys, uh, I've been back in the gym. Um, I've built a home gym as well. Um, in the last seven months, I ran anabolic. Um, I tried to run performance, and I kind of got caught up. Um, I did it for about three weeks, and I was having difficulty with the um, mobility sessions. Um, they take me much longer than the foundational workouts. Movements are kind of awkward for me. Uh, when I'm on the road, I don't have like foam roller. I don't have the mobility stick. I don't have any of that. So um, after about three weeks, I kind of abandoned it and went on to aesthetic. <laughs> um, really enjoyed that. I finished that. Um, I ran. Um, yeah. So um, I'm kind of wondering uh, what you guys would recommend. I've got uh, fall marathon training seasons coming up um, late May. I'd like to take another go at MAPS performance. Um, but I've heard you guys say, you know, that MAPS programs are intended to be run on their own, yeah. not, not along with anything else. So if you have any other, you know, training suggestions, um, any way to incorporate strength, mobility, those kind of things into um, my running schedule, I would really appreciate your advice. Can you tell us your running schedule? How much are you running a week? Yeah. Um, so I run, um, basic workouts are two speed sessions a week um, and one long run. Um, I start out running about three hours a week and then I peak three weeks prior to my race um, at about seven hours of running a week. Okay. And you said that's three weeks before? Um, the, yeah, the, the peak, um, peak long run is three weeks before the actual race. Okay. It, what's the qualifier for Boston for you? Is it three, is it three hours and 30 minutes or something like that? It is three hours and 30 minutes. Oh, yeah. Good, and I, um, good for you. yeah, my record is a, is a three twenty two. Mm -hmm. Um, so I know I can achieve, <laughs> like I've been there. I know I can do it. Um, but my fall race was, um, I had fun, um, but it was, it was a little disappointing. I was closer to the four hour, four Oh five mark. Yeah. You're so. going to have, you're going to have to do less. Well, so maps performance is a phenomenal program, but I wouldn't do it with all that running, at yeah. least not the whole program. Mm -hmm. I would do okay. one foundational workout a week. And then three weeks before, I would only do mobility. I wouldn't do any strength training the three weeks before. Yeah, I want to talk about the mobility sessions a little bit just because, um, honestly, for what you're doing and what you're passionate about and all the repetitive stress and, and staying in one plane pr predominantly, um, they, those movements are going to be awkward. Uh, and and it's, that's, that's something that we need to really focus in on and, and reinforce so that way you know you have more longevity uh you know in your performance out there as well and you'll you'll feel more supported so um you know if there's other ways too i know we have other resources in terms of like the stick or whatever you don't have it around like there's there's the 
Prime Pro webinar that Adam did as well, which is, you know, all based body weight. So you could just do that anywhere, any place, but you're at least going to then, you know, mobilize the hips, the ankles, um, you know, express uh, your joints in, in different uh, with rotation in different planes. It's just very essential for, uh, especially for competitors. I would I would highly recommend you yeah. really dive into it. I I love that you went that way because what was going through my head and also to pair with what Sal was saying is I'd, I'd have you run um, mass performance foundational one day a week, and then two to three days a week I would have you run like a Prime Pro the Prime Pro webinar like literally yep. just follow that put it on your TV. Do it in your living room. And, it hits and, everything. Yes, so. and, and it'll it'll complement all the running you're doing. And any more volume and weight training with that much running, I think it's it's going to probably hinder your time. And I know that's yeah. probably important to you. Yeah, you know, I'm going to guess to I'm going to make a guess, Heather. I want you to correct me if I'm wrong, because you switched from performance to aesthetic, which is an interesting choice, considering you're an endurance athlete. You have some aesthetic goals too. Is that is that correct? Um. You know, everyone wants to look their best. Yeah. Um, but honestly, the reason that the reason that I did it um, was because it sounded like fun. <laughs> yeah. Mm -hmm. um, lifting heavy things, and uh, that's a lot of fun. So I've I have enjoyed I've enjoyed aesthetic. Um, I enjoyed anabolic too. Um, I really just want to be you know well rounded. Mm -hmm. um, running is obviously my my passion. It's I want to do it as well as I can for as long as I can. Um, but I enjoy trying different things. Yeah. The beauty of strength training, especially for an athlete like you once a week, and you're going to reap all the benefits more than that. And you run the risk of overdoing it, especially with the amount of running that you're doing. So you take that one foundational workout a week of maps performance and you're set and you can pitch, pick whichever one you want and go through it, uh, through all the different phases and then do mobility stuff on the off days. You're set. Three I would three weeks before I would I would cut out the strength training. Yeah. Um okay. and just focus on mobility because at that point you really just want to peak with your performance and you you ramp up your your endurance so much. Um on your speed days, what do those look like? You said you do two speed sessions a week? Yeah, um they vary from week to week. Um sometimes I'm doing um it, it really varies. Sometimes I'm doing intervals um where I'm doing like faster than my marathon pace for a certain period of time. And then I'm walking or jogging. Oh, okay. um, sometimes we're doing tempo runs where you start out, you know, slower than marathon pace, you work your way up to it. You hold that pace for a certain amount of time and then you back down again. Yeah. Um, but and sometimes we do hill repeats, yeah. um, which is like a strength training speed work kind of combo thing. Yeah. What's, what's the, the duration though? Like, I think that's probably what Sal's looking for. How long oh, is it I'm an sorry. hour, two hours, three hours, 30 minutes? Like how long are you? <laughs> Yeah, no, the speed workout um, doesn't go anywhere near that length. Um, it starts a, at about like 35 minutes worth of, of um, a okay. session, and that's everything, the uh, warm-up, okay. you know, that's the good. actual work yeah, and yeah, the cool down. Yeah, that's you all. Sound, you sound like you have a coach. Um, no, I've just been doing it for a really long time. <laughs> oh, okay. Well, no, that's that's actually that's so. the, that's the right way to do it. Actually, you're, you're I've trained a few quite a few marathon runners, and you've got a pretty good layout. The strength training was just where – I think we could make some of the, those changes. You know, I would even, you can even experiment with this, Heather, if, you, if you're if you open to it. On one of those speed session days, I would cut the speed session in half and I would, if you have access to a sled, do sled drives uh, outside. I mean, I've, I've had people really improve their speed, uh, their, their sprint I, speed and strength pushing a sled. I would love to see her do Prime Pro before she goes and does the speed work. I think to prime you up before sure. you go do that stuff, I think you'll actually feel and see a difference in that work. Yeah. So if you can, I would love for you to do do the the Prime Pro webinar, go through that, and then do your your yeah. speed work. But, and see but try how you try some sled stuff. It's really good when it, like in terms of like like sprint speed and power, it really it really makes a big difference. And you could just drive the sled for ten minutes and then do the other half of your normal speed session. See see how that feels for you. Okay, fantastic. Um, I've done the Prime Pro webinar uh, before, oh, so um, uh, that works out great. Uh, when you say once a week for the foundational exercises, mm -hmm. um, how would you run through the various phases? I would go through look at the look at the foundational workouts during the week. All of them are full body, mm -hmm. so you're not going to go wrong. Okay, look at okay. the three foundational workouts. Pick the one you like, mm -hmm. and then do that one. And then that's the week, and then you move to the next okay. week. Does that make sense? 
Yeah. So I would just do once a week, like phase one, once a week for three weeks and then move on to phase two exactly. once a week. Yep. You yep. know, I could just basically do one workout a week. Correct. Yep. yep. Exactly. Cool. And you guys have given me an excuse to buy a sled. So thank you. Yeah. <laughs> Excellent. <laughs> Always an excuse. Yeah. I wish that. we sold sleds. <laughs> Thanks for calling in. Appreciate Heather. that. You got it. Thank you guys. Have a great day. Appreciate Thanks, you. No problem. All right. Yeah. It's a good message for endurance athletes. Like if you're doing a lot of endurance training, one day a week yeah. of strength training will make a it's huge difference. It, yeah. And I, I at one point had a lot of endurance athletes and I would go three days a week of strength training. Then I went down to two. Then I'm like, wait a minute, is that still too much? Went down to one and everybody saw significant improvements uh, in their performance. Because that type of training really taxes the body. When you're doing endurance work, it really does tax the body. Well, I really hope that she sticks to the mobility because Justin brings up a good point. I mean, if it's it's awkward and you're having a hard time. It's I probably because you need to do it. Yeah, that's right. I think it just highlights don't just the jump past it, right? Yeah, don't skip it because it's difficult. I mean, that's the if you she made a point, I want to I want to do this for as long as I can. If you want to do this for as long as you can, that's what you need to start doing to complement that. And that's what's going to allow you to do that. If you continue to ignore it because it's you know, laborious or you're not good at it, well, then what will end up happening is you'll, your your running career will end sooner or later. Yeah, well, and it's just inevitable. It's like things might be working out for you right now, but like at some point, things may be getting off track in terms of your joint alignment. Um, you know, there's just going to be certain stressors that are going to keep like compounding uh, that uh, you, could, uh, you could just avoid that completely by moving laterally and, and rotating and really like focusing on that uh, to to counterbalance and get your body to stable properly. You know, the other thing that's really hard to communicate because we don't get to talk to everybody that's running our programs too, is that, you know, if, if the whole mobility session or all of Prime or Prime Pro seems overwhelming, I mean, the bare minimum, pick a, a handful of these movements that you can feel making an, an improvement. And you should be able to, if you actually do a couple of these mobility drills that we have in there and then go into your workout, it's like, right, you'll feel the difference right then and there. And if you notice how much you feel better when you do that, it's at least stick to a few of those and incorporate it instead of like, oh, man, I can't do that whole hour of this or that's too much or I don't get this. And so they abandon the whole thing. It's like, you know, we can still chip away at one or two things at a time. Our next caller is Amethyst from California. Hey, Amethyst, how can we help you? Good, cool name, by the way. Thank you. Hi. Uh, first, I want to say thank you, guys. I'm a new trainer, and your content has really helped me improve and think about programming differently. So thank you for what you do. Um, my question today is, uh, like I said, I've been listening to you guys for a while. And one of the things that you've said several times is when you have a new client come in and they say, I want to lose weight, the first thing you tell them is, well, let's put on some muscle first and so that you have a runway and that uh, the weight loss is steady mm -hmm. and easier. And so the thing that I'm running into with that is to put on that muscle, we need to lift heavy. We need to have a calorie surplus. And um, some of my, many of my clients that come in have been so inactive for so long that they have a lot of postural distortions and so some of them really just make me nervous doing like a body weight squat. So I was wondering if you guys had any suggestions for um, how you would approach that. A client that that just their posture is, is distorted and needs a lot of work before we can start really lifting heavy safely. Yeah, that's a good, this is a good question. Yeah. And first off, thanks to, for what you do. It's all, all the trainers out there that are really making the big impact on people. Okay, so... Correctional, so I want to be clear here. When you correct uh, movement patterns or you're doing correctional exercise, you're strength training. Yeah, yeah. It's it's no different than lifting heavy, except obviously the modality is different and the goals are different. So you have to start with correctional exercise before you can go to, I don't know, I guess heavy, for lack of a better term, traditional strength training. Also heavy is relative to the client yes. too, right? It's all, so it's, yeah, it's all intense. Overload, there's a lot of different versions of that. Totally. So correction, correctional exercise builds strength and builds muscle just like you know what someone might consider heavy uh, strength training would do. In fact, it's more appropriate for these clients that you're talking about. If you were to take like, and you've got great instinct, obviously, you take these people and have them do traditional heavy strength training without correctional exercise. I think you realize you'll probably hurt them, right? So, so that correctional exercise builds strength and build, all strength training builds strength and muscle. Whether it's correctional mobility or powerlifting or bodybuilding, all does that. So. That's the correct place to start. So you're totally fine. So you, there's there's no questions there. Start with the correctional exercise and you are moving in the right direction. What programs do you own of ours? 
None yet. Oh wow. Uh, okay. Well, there's there's where gotta, we need to start. Right get there. you going. So, I mean, there's there's several things that you. I mean, you should have you should have the Prime and Prime Pro. You should have Starter for sure. You should have Anabolic. How many, and then, how many then free programs? No, I'm not giving away. All this. <laughs> I'm just saying that you already there, said it. Now we there's, got it. there's a there's a there's a lot of programs that you you could be using for because everyone's going to be a little bit different. You have some clients that absolutely you need to regress all the way back to like following Prime or Prime Pro, and they just they're sticking all yeah. correctional. Then you're going to have some people that need a little bit of correctional work but can start to do some traditional stuff and maybe they're at map starter they're gonna have some people that have a good background and can get right into something like maps anabolic but then you still use you know primer prime pro to complement that so that and that's why we have all these programs because we know that there's people that are going to be starting at different levels here but like sal said your intuition is right i mean if you see that they there's some serious dysfunction there but loading that client up on a, a heavy barbell squat is not the place you want to go um but you know you're gonna, it's a spectrum you're going to find people uh on all different levels and that's why we have so many different programs now what i will give to you and i think that will benefit you the most is is give her i think we should give her the prime to so she can assess clients and see this and, and use the mobility prime drills starter yeah prime, prime and starter. starter is what i think That's you should do. absolutely have for what we're talking about right now yeah I, there's definitely like a, a scale of this and i think too like in terms of a surplus like if you just if you just have them really focus on um you know replacing food or like making better decisions to incorporate uh, in terms of of you know nutrient dense foods uh and maybe like by proxy you're getting rid of like uh, processed foods but really the strength training is the focus in the very beginning uh if, if anybody has dysfunction this is the the biggest priority uh is to be able to create a nice stable functional body that then you can build upon so this, this is the foundational part of of training i wouldn't necessarily worry too much about um you know uh, really building size and 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 just like uh you know muscle definition as much as really like the the strength portion of it is everything in terms of stability in a strong body not to mention a body weight squat can be strength training for somebody i mean that just depending on where their level is you you know you don't we don't always have to be loading a barbell you know it's it's all relative to where they're they're currently at and so, you know, it may not seem like heavy lifting to you or us. But it is to them. It is to them. Yeah. Are you, where are you training out of, by the way? Are you out of a big gym, big box? Uh, no, I've been doing private stuff or in-home training primarily. So that's what I've been working at, especially with COVID. Uh, that's just, I happen to get my, uh, all of my certifications and everything during COVID. And so that's just kind of where I had to start. And that's been very successful for me so far. Yeah. Good for you. Amethyst, just to hammer this home, look, if you're, when you're doing a correctional exercise and it works, what happened to the person's body? They built strength, mm -hmm. which then leads to muscle. So yeah. it's, it's all strength training. It's all you're going that direction. You're just, a, you're just doing it. A, you're just applying this, the appropriate type to that person. Does that make sense? Yeah, that totally makes sense. Yeah. Thank you, guys. You got it. No mm -hmm. problem. And, and you got Maps Prime and Starter coming your way. Awesome. Thank you so much. Thank you. Yeah, there, there's like a people always feel like you have to trade one for the other, or oh, I'm going to miss out on all these gains if I. Yeah. First off, if you have issues, you have to correct. You can't go into traditional heavy strength training. It's just not going to work. Yeah. No, you're going to hurt yourself. You have to address it. You have to. Yeah. So, and it is strength training. You are building muscle. It's just, you know, you have to look at the long term of all of mm -hmm. this. And so this is, yeah, it, it might not be as satisfying as like getting a crazy pump and like seeing visible muscle all of a sudden, but you are building strength. You are building muscle and you know, you're, you're building something that you can keep building on. Yeah. I had a, I had a 75 year old woman once that, that hi, her daughter hired her for me and she was very deconditioned. And over the course of three months, we progressed from being able to sit down and stand up off of a bench. That was her squat to standing body weight squats, a push up that was up against the wall to one that was off of a desk. So she went lower and essentially that was the progression mm -hmm. over three months. And I remember her daughter going, is she going to build like muscle off this? I said, well, yeah, this is what it's appropriate for. Well, in three months, she gained four pounds of lean body mass at 75 years old. 
So yeah, your body gets stronger. It builds muscle. And really, it's where you're starting at. Is, is well, I mean, we didn't at. even really get into our whole catalog of why we we address like. So we have Prime Pro, we have Prime, you know. Then Pro. we have then we have Starter. Then we have Maps Resistance. Right. So it's like, you know, you have Starter, which addresses a lot of the imbalance and, mm -hmm. and has you know stability ball and it's but introduces them to dumbbells. But then it takes it a bit further with yes. resistance. And then now you now you have symmetry, so we can really break it down and. and and address these things at like a really comprehensive level. So I get, it's all there. I get so frustrated when we talk to trainers that have been listening to us for an extended period of time and you're relatively new to the game and you don't fucking own any programs. Like it just, it, I, I understand why as a trainer, like you want, you know, you have a lot of pride that you can create your own program. And so you, you don't want to follow somebody else's. Okay, that's fine. But for the educational piece, the, the amount of, of knowledge, experience, and effort that we've put into building the, building these all out so that as a trainer, you have all these resources to you. And for the price of what, I mean, you know how many times we, we just had an event, Sal and I were just at an event. How many of the trainers come up to you and be like, oh my God, I've gotten more and learned more from Prime and Prime Pro than I have from any certification that I've ever yeah. paid for. And, and it's, those, it's a fraction of the cost. Yeah, you're talking, about, yeah you're talking about something that's under a hundred bucks. Under a hundred bucks compared to, you know, certifications that are costing you 500 to a thousand dollars. I just, it blows me away when they don't have that. We have the, all the answers she's looking for are built in all those programs. Yeah. Well, yeah. I think too, we give away so much for free. People hear that information and then they, they try to piece it together. Yeah. But, um, you know, well, we want them to have it. That's well, which is fine. Which is, I mean, which it's is totally fine. fine yeah, but totally. You, you get all the answers to the test on top of it and then it's all organized for you and it's really easy. And then you can share the videos, you know, with clients totally. for the demo. So it's all, kind of laid out for you. But I mean, I, I, you know, I get it. I was a trainer at one point and there's so much free stuff out there. It's like, okay, do I want to, you know, but it's, it's definitely worth it. It's definitely valuable. And once you get it and you figure it out, you piece it together, then you move on from there. Our next caller is Pedro from Oregon. Pedro, what's going on? How can we help you? Hi, gentlemen. My name is Pedro. Uh, I've been listening for a couple of months. I got to say I'm a fan and I love the content. Thank uh, you. My Instagram has been quieter and sadly because they took out Sal. Yeah. Um, Still hurt. Yeah. Uh, R.I.P. <laughs> Call me Graham. Call me Graham. Kick me, kick me off. Yeah. <laughs> my, my questions in regards to, there's been news about the publicity in regards to the armed forces and uh, reviewing uh, physical fitness assessments. So the Army, for example, over the last few years, updated their test and a goal better to get a better overall fitness assessment. Uh, one complexity we see is uh, reservist type personnel who work out together maybe once or a couple times a month. So it has limited the ability to influence folks in terms of health and fitness. Um, if just to kind of give a little bit of background on the army test, it's a three rep max deadlift, uh, hand release push ups, a 10 pound med ball throw, uh, a complex, which is a sprint and drag carry with a 90 pound sled and carrying two 40 pound kettlebells. Uh, there's a plank, which is one to three minutes. And then there's a two mile run at the end. And this is all done like over an hour to two maximum. My question to you gentlemen is in your opinion, with your professional experience and looking at these updates, I have two questions here, <laughs> sorry. What would be the best course of action for those with limited time with personnel? Either should we assess overall athleticism prior to testing or should we do a test and see and troubleshoot after? Hmm. I'll start, I'll start with that one, Pedro. So this is a, this is a little challenging because the, the armed forces are in a bit of a conundrum, aren't they? It's like, we need to make a test to make sure that people are meet the minimum requirements to be on the battlefield, but we can't make it too tough because then a lot of people will fail and we won't have, uh, any soldiers. Am, am I right? That would seem like the way they'd go about it. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So there's a bit of a conundrum here. Okay. So that being said, all you really have to work off of is the current test. Yeah. So the best way to test somebody for that test is to run the test. That would be the best thing to do. So because the test is a pass or fail, if you fail, you can't serve. If you pass, then you can come on in. That seems that's like the threshold. That's what I would test somebody on. And I'd say, okay, let's see what you do with the army test and test them from there. 
anything additional, although we'll tell you, we'll give you some information, isn't going to speak directly to this test. Now, how does it all speak to battle readiness? I have no idea. I've never served in the military, so I can't tell you exactly, you know, how I would test somebody. All I have to work off of is what the United, you know, the United States Army has decided this is the physical threshold that we will create before somebody can actually serve in the military. So the test that I would do would be the test that they do. That's how I would test people out. Does that make sense? Roger. Yeah. I mean, okay. th this reminds me of talking to somebody like about CrossFit. Like if you want to get good at CrossFit, you do CrossFit stuff. Like this is a very specific, very specific. test that you want to do. And um, sure, there's other exercises that can have some carryover, but nothing is going to get you better at those things or improve uh, your chances of passing the test than doing the test yeah. and getting good at the test. So like that would be the training protocol would literally look like that until we're, we're kicking ass yeah. at it and, and mastering it. Yeah. Think of it this way, Pedro. It's like if I had to take a biology test and I could learn all of biology or the teacher could give me the test questions and say, here, just study these. Right. So it's a bit of a yeah. shortcut. Now it's not, it's, it's not going to give you, is you know as good of a broad understanding of biology as unknowing all of biology, but this is the threshold. Now, in the when the person is working out on their own, that's when I would incorporate more well-rounded training. So the way I would work out if if this was me, is I would once a week do the army test as my workout, and then two or three days of the week I would do other types of workouts, probably centered around traditional strength training, multiplanar or like, like mass training. performance. Yeah. yeah mass sure. performance. Yeah. Does that, does that make sense? Okay. No. Yeah. That mass performance would be okay. Yeah. That would be what I would do also, but I would also make sure that I ran this test as well because you know, strength and performance is, is as much a skill as it is physical ability. So like, you know, you, you can have the physical ability, but the skill of doing the three rep deadlift, the the skill of doing the sprint, drag, carry, mm -hmm. and the plank and the run, like, you know, I could build tremendous stamina by swimming and I'll have some carryover to the run, but I'll get way better carryover to the run if I just run. You see what I'm saying? Yeah, absolutely. And that kind of brings it right in line with the second question was uh, uh, a potential concern is, you know, a one size fits all. So, uh, with uh, the recent studies showing that sedentary lifestyles affect bone density for yeah. these Nintendo generation folks. So would it be best to then provide specific individual training protocols or maybe a program centered around strength and performance and yeah. all these areas? Well, logistically speaking, I don't know if that's possible. All, it's always best to have an individualized program. Always. There's nothing better than that, right? No, there's no program that's I can right. write for the general public that's ever going to be good as a program, I can write for one specific individual who I assess and watch and all that stuff. So we're going to have to speak generally. Generally speaking, if I were to construct a workout for somebody based off of this test and what we're talking about, I would do you know two or three workouts, very similar to MAPS performance. And then one workout would be the army test, would be just that. And I would just do that uh, until it was time to go take the test. That would give you a good, well-rounded fitness, mobility, Reduce the range of risk of injury, bone, you know, bone density, muscle, all that stuff. Would you only do the test once? Would you not consider it twice a week? Depends how well. It's a good question. It depends how well or bad I did on it. Like yeah. If I sucked at it, I would practice it more. Yeah. For sure. So keep that keep that in in mind. Is that if they're if they're really struggling with the test, then that that's a person that I might actually prescribe twice a week doing the test, and then only one day or maybe two yeah. days of like a maps performance type of a program, or pull out those very specific exercises in those other workouts and and focus on those specifically to you know sharpen the skill of them even. Pedro, do you do? You, Great information. Thank you. Do you have mass performance? Uh, I actually, I, I'm a personal trainer too, but I bought your guys' programs. Uh, I, I mean, I love uh, the majority of them. I, I got, I think there might be a few that I'm missing. Uh, well, you, well, if you don't have mass performance, performance is, is such a good fit. It has yeah. all of these exercises listed in there. So yeah. we'll, we'll send it to you if you don't have it, Pedro. Okay. You got it, man. I appreciate your service. Thank you. Oh, hey, thank you guys. I think you're just an at. Adam, uh, Sal, and Doug, I, I cannot thank you guys enough. You got it, man. Thank you, yeah, brother. Thank you, dude. Yeah, I don't know if you guys have been reading about this, but uh, they I read an article that they were going to change the distance for people to throw the grenade oh, because, yeah, so because so many people the, were failing. Wasn't there memes and jokes that came around that? Yeah. Well, I mean, it's, it's, a, it's, it's a weird – because we have a voluntary military, and yeah. so on the one hand, you want to make sure people are – 
you know, qualified. On the other hand, if you make the, the too hard, then too hard, know. we have no military. You right. know what's interesting about that? I thought about that because I bet you there's this this sort of split where some people are better probably at like drone operation or of you course. know like technical things versus the physical side. Uh, which you know, what's the priority now in the military? It, it, that's what's interesting to me. Yeah, I think it depends on where you're going and what you're going to do, right? But yeah, it, yeah it, is this a general test that even like so that's like what just, it says right there, the army test? Because that's that's is interesting, right? If you were if you were somebody who was going to fly drones or do something like that, yeah. that you would still have to do like a test. Like I think this. they would probably. If I'm, I'm assuming this, so I have no idea, but I'm assuming they have to f do at least some kind of a physical yeah, you test. You have to have a standard at least, right? Yeah. Everybody. Yeah, but. just to make sure that they're healthy. You know what I mean? That they're kind of fit and healthy. Yeah, so I would think then if you get into more like the ranger side or like sort of the, the special forces side, they would be way more rigorous in yeah. terms of the physicality. And this is, in, you know, not to get to, you know, whatever, but this is why it was always strange to me to have different standards for, for the same position for men and women. And I understand women don't, perform uh, typically as well as men or whatever, but it makes sense to me to have one standard. And then if you pass, you pass, if you fail, you fail. Right. But again, the problem is if you make the standard too high, you have all these volunteers that now can't serve. Right. And so you're kind of and stuck in this. Out, yeah. Man. Yeah. People help them. Yeah. Serve. So, but I mean, who knows, you know, modern, modern warfare is, gonna, is starting to look very different. It's, it's so more different. and more like uh, video game operators. I think it's going to look like in the future, but yeah, it's, it's just one of those things. But if you want to get good at a test, just like taking any test. I mean, I remember, Years ago, I did a, I took a series six test for investments and I just studied the test. You know, I yeah. studied the test that yeah, I passed. If it's there and provided, it's like, yeah, let's, let's focus on that. They already gave you sort of the direction. Totally. Look, if you like our information, head over to mindpumpfree.com and check out our guides. We have guides that can help you with almost any health or fitness goal. You can also find all of us on social media. So you can find Justin on Instagram at mindpumpjustin, Adam on Instagram at mindpumpadam, and you can find me on Twitter at mindpumpsal.com. 